Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Always back with another Angular tutorial. It's been a while since I created a tutorial. So today I'm going to be bringing you a very interesting tutorial. Now on my screen, you can see I've got this progress spinner and this progress bar. These two components are commonly used when you're loading a data or performing any async functions on your web application using Angular. Usually when you have to show this loading spinner, you have to create one and then you have to have some logic to disable. Now code can be really messy when you have to enable or disable these progress bars or loading spinners. I'm going to show you how you can create a custom decorator, which you can apply to any async function, which will make this progress spinner appear and when the operation is finished or let's say promise is resolved it will just hide this progress spinner so without further ado let's get started we are going to create a div and set the id to loading we're going to use angular material component which is going to be mat dash spinner webstrom will automatically import the module for us Let's specify some properties like color as one diameter. I'm going to specify 80 and you need to specify the mode. I'm going to use the intermediate mode. We can also use a stroke property to give it a like, you know, a bit thickness. So in this case, we'll just use eight and then just close that. Once you save the file, you can see the progress spinner is appearing in our application. We want to make this appear when async function happens. We can do that with a CSS property. So let's do that next. Let's load data using HTTP client from JSON placeholder, which is like a service that you can use to download a data through HTTP uh, protocol. So in constructor function, I'm going to import HTTP client. Next, we can use that HTTP client to make a GET request. It's going to throw an error because you need to import HTTP client module in app module. But first, let's create a data variable. And I'm going to use async await here, this.http.get, and then pass in the URL. To just demonstrate that the data is loading, we're just going to console log a data. HTTP client get method will return observable but i want to convert that observable into a promise so we we'll use our xjs last value from function which will convert the observable to promise and then we just log the data next we go to app module and within the app module we import http client module web app and then let's do uh, a test so I'll click on load data you see the API call and I received the data. So it means our async function, this loaded function is working. Currently, our loading spinner is always up here. So how do we hide this through CSS? So I'm going to open the SAS file for this component. Let me open on a side and I'm gonna just paste something here. So first of all, if you look at this loading is the ID, right? And then from the ID, we are specifying some CSS Properties like display flex, justify content, align item, and the visibility is the one uh, which basically going to hide this. So if you look at application, uh, the spinner is there, but it's not visible anymore. Also, this mat spinner, it's targeting this component directly, having its absolute property 50%, and then 999, it's like, you know, it's gonna be appearing above everything else. And if I make this property as visible, save that and then we go and take a look at the replication and you know it's it's basically loading in the center now which is a good thing now how do we make this appear and this um and then hide it when there's no async functionality so first of all we're going to be making this hidden right now let's go ahead and create a new typescript file i'll use this right click typescript load let's say loading dot decorator and we're going to add that there now this is the decorator that we're going to be creating to help out the async function so i'm going to be pasting the code to save the time and then 
I'll try to explain that. Okay, so here we have the code for TypeScript decorator. So here's a function name, loading a decorator. It, it is taking three parameters, target, property, key, and then the descriptor. Within this function, we are storing our original method from descriptor.value, and we store that here. Next, what we do is we will use this document that get element by ID. Now the ID is uh, this loading. So let me just open that right here. So whatever the ID that you specify here, that's what I'm going to, you know, access the element through this get element by ID. Once I do have access, I want to make sure it's not null or undefined. What I'll do, I'll just use this loading dot style dot visibility is equal to visible. So we will just, you know, make the property hidden visible, which make which will make our component, you know, available. Next, we are going to use the try catch block. And within the try catch block, you see we have this original method which was stored here in this variable. We will basically just run that using this dot apply method passing this and args, whatever the parameters that you have with the original method. This will basically run it. And we're using this async await because we want to wait for this function to complete. Now, next, once this is complete, if we uh, if we have the loading already, then we just make that, you know, property, visibility property to hidden, which will make it disappear. And then we just return the result. Also, I'm using the catch block because if there is an error, then we still want to hide the, the loading bar. Next, we're going to go to app component and we got this load data function. I'm going to add a decorator, load decorator, which basically a syntax is add symbol and then the name of the decorator. And in the function, I'm going to simply return await last value and make the promise return any. Next, let's go to our application. And then when I click on this load data, you will see the spinner appearing. I'm going to make the throttling to, let's say, a slow 3G, because it will browser will act as a slow. So now you can see the async function is triggering the spinner. And once the async functionality is complete, the spinner goes away automatically. And that's happening just because of this loading decorator. It's really the best way to deal with all the loading of your async functionality. There are other use cases for this as well, but for loading the data, this is like the best thing you can do instead of, you know, having a check of, you know, creating a loading and then disappearing it uh, on the time of completion. Now within the loading decorator, once I debug this, you'll see the descriptor of value has the original method, which in this case is a load data. And at the line number uh, 19, it triggers that function. Once that function is complete, then it will store the value coming from that API into result variable on line number 19. Triggering that function now. And once the result is received, then you see the result has all the data coming back from the JSON placeholder. And then it just returns the results. And all happening within that decorator. And that decorator concept is pretty, uh, pretty nice when you try to use it. And you can see in Angular, at component, at module, uh, all of these are actually decorators. So I'm going to create a second load data function and then also add this loading decorator. And we can use this JSON placeholder, different API. Let's go to guide and then I will find another API. Let's copy this line and then replace that with this uh, endpoint. Next, once you have this loading decorator, it will appear, uh, the, it will make the spinner appear, but I'm just gonna remove that to demonstrate it. So once I save everything, um, we will we'll actually create a new uh, button there, and then we will uh, call that second load data function. So I'm gonna use this button component and then use the mat dash button. WebStorm is nice. It automatically imports that mat button module in app module. We use the click event and call that function. Once I refresh this page, actually we need to make the network to no throttling. And you see the second button appearing. When I click on it, it calls the API, but it's too quick. So um, 
you know, the spinner might not appear for a long time, but spinner is not appearing because we don't have that loading decorator um, used on um, this function. So you can see load data does make the spinner appear uh, and then the other function doesn't. So load decorator, let's add that there. Once it is added, then we should test it with and the spinner should appear. Okay, let's um, save and refresh. Now, when I click on load second data, spinner appears, and when the API call completes, then it just goes away. So now you can see how cool the decorator is, and it takes away all the you know messy code that you will have to write to create a spinner, and then on the completion, you'll have to hide it. Uh, with the help of decorator, you just got to basically add that loading decorator on any async function and it will do the job. Okay, so if you really like this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you guys in the next one. Cheers.